Hi, I'm Chris Mutchler, Principal Enterprise Architect and VCDX257 from VirtualElephant.com. And in this video, we are going to dive deep into the tech strategies that are driving modern businesses forward. We're going to focus on two critical benefits of microservices architectures that are top of mind for CTOs and CIOs alike, agility and speed of innovation. Let's get started. To get started, let's level set around what a microservices architecture is. Now, if you're unfamiliar with a microservices architecture, it is a method for taking a larger application and breaking it down into many smaller pieces. Now, each of these individual components or microservices are often designed to be extremely lightweight and flexible. They're also designed to be able to communicate with one another through an HTTP API. Now, a microservices architecture is going to offer a plethora of benefits to both an engineering team and an organization itself. Its lightweight in nature allows it to be able to be more flexible for updates and lifecycle activities, enabling organizations to be able to move at a faster pace of agility and innovation, which is what we're going to focus on in this video today. So let's dive into how you, as a CIO or CTO or other IT leader or engineering leader within your organization, can leverage microservices to be able to increase your agility and speed of innovation within your organizations. Now, adopting a microservices architecture or developing new microservices themselves within your engineering organizations oftentimes is going to be part of a digital or cloud transformation. And the first reason for leveraging microservices within your organizations is going to be around the independent service development. When you adopt a microservices mentality within your engineering organizations, it's going to allow you to be able to independently develop each component within your larger application ecosystem. And this independence is going to allow your development teams to be able to work and focus on their microservice without having to wait for a larger monolithic application team to complete their development. And once you've started to develop these individual microservices, you're going to find that your engineering teams have a lot more flexibility uh, within their development cycles and how often they're able to publish and send out code that can be consumed by the larger application ecosystem that you're developing within your organizations. And this flexibility and this independent service development is one of the most crucial aspects and reasons why CTOs and engineering organizations over the last 10 years have really focused in and started adopting microservices in all of their application development. And this is in stark contrast to how we used to develop applications 15, 20 years ago, where everything was this monolithic app that we were developing, and there was no way to break it up because everything was just one entire solo entity. Now, the second reason for adopting microservices within your engineering or IT organizations is going to be the ability that you have as an engineering leader to create smaller focused teams. Now, I've spoken about this considerably in the past around how we need to organize our environments as part of a digital or cloud transformation. And creating smaller, more focused teams is going to allow you, your individual contributors, and the organization as a whole to be more agile. There are many different models of how you should structure these smaller focused teams that have been floated over the last 5, 10, even 15 years. One of the most popular concepts was the idea of no team should be larger than what it takes to feed a team with two large pizzas. And so that gives you an idea about how large these teams should be. Now, the point of creating these smaller, more focused teams, again, is to be able to allow them to have greater ownership and flexibility over the code and services that they are writing within the application as a whole. And by having smaller focused teams, it should allow your organizations to be able to adapt 
to changes in the market and changes in the uh, uh, technical stack that might be coming out. Things like, again, generative AI. When we have these smaller focused teams, we find oftentimes that our organizations are far more agile and able to adapt to the market needs. Now, the third reason or way in which a microservices architecture is going to help you be able to realize greater agility and speed of innovation is around technology stack diversity. And so what do I mean when I say technology stack diversity? Well, long gone are the days where applications are entirely written in one programming language, such as C or C++. Now, that's what the industry was like when I first started out in the mid-90s, but long gone are those days. So again, by adopting a microservices architecture or microservices themselves within our application ecosystem, it's going to, again, allow those smaller focused teams to pick that technology stack is most appropriate or that is most appropriate for the microservice that they are writing. And again, this is going to feed into the ability of these smaller focused teams to be able to leverage the most appropriate tools that are out there at the time that they're writing the microservice for the microservice itself. And so they no longer have to worry about what the rest of the technology stack might be within the broader application ecosystem. Because again, these microservices are going to interact with one another or communicate with one another through an API. And so long as that their API is being exposed, it shouldn't matter what the underlying tech stack is that those microservices are leveraging. So again, all of this is starting to build together, right? As we work on these things, smaller focus teams, tech stack diversity, to be able to enable our organizations to be more agile and be able to increase the speed of innovation. So let's talk about the fourth reason why we want to be adopting microservices within our engineering organizations to increase our ability to be more agile and rapidly accelerate the speed at which we are able to innovate. Now, the fourth reason is all around CICD or continuous integration, continuous delivery. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a CICD pipeline is, it's really an automated method for which we are able to check in code, perform testing on that code, and then push that code out to the various uh, environments that we might have, staging, prod, development, so forth. And so when we leverage CICD pipelines as a part of adopting microservices within our organization, this is going to drastically increase our ability to push code from the time that a developer writes it all the way out to when it reaches production. And this is going to be critical when we talk about microservices because, again, one of the things that from an agility perspective we're gaining when we adopt microservices is for the ability of these teams to rapidly check in and push out code. Now, if I'm rapidly checking in code for microservices A, I need to make sure that it will still work with the versions of the other microservices that are making up the application as a whole. So a CICD pipeline is going to be a way in which we're able to accomplish this by allowing this automated testing and automated pushing of these updates through the pipeline to our various environments to be able to show us that, yes, this new piece of code that the engineering team for microservices A continues to work for all of the other microservices that are making up this application as a whole. So far, we've discussed the reasons and the benefits of why an organization, IT or engineering, should be adopting microservices as part of a broader digital or cloud transformation. Now let's focus on some of the strategic considerations a CTO or CIO should be concerned with as we talk about adopting microservices. Now, the first thing that we should be concerned with when considering adopting microservices within our engineering or IT organizations is making sure that it aligns with all of our strategic goals. Now, these strategic goals can be business focused or these strategic goals can be technical focused. But regardless, we want to make sure that the reason we are adopting microservices or a microservice architecture in the first place is really going to help us drive innovation within our organizations 
so that we can realize some of these potential benefits as part of a broader digital or cloud transformation. As with anything, we don't want to be adopting a new technical stack or a new architecture framework simply to adopt them. There need to be business reasons and business drivers behind these decisions. And so as a CTO or CIO, this should be top of mind for you as you're considering adopting microservices within your organizations. Now, the second strategic consideration we should be thinking about is around the IT tools and the enablement for their use within our organizations. As I've talked about in the past, enabling our individual contributors, whether they're an SRE or an engineer or an ops or infrastructure person, is going to be crucial as we adopt anything new as part of a digital or cloud transformation. And this enablement is going to be critical on us as leaders within our organizations to drive. Because again, we want to make sure that our individual contributors have the ability to adopt these technical stacks as rapidly as possible. And in order to do so, oftentimes we are going to need to be able to enable our employees either through formal or informal training in, able, in order to be able to realize the greater benefits from something like a microservices architecture. Now, before I move into the third or final strategic consideration that we should be thinking about as a CTO or CIO within our organizations, is that I want you to make sure to understand that adopting a microservices architecture and implementing microservices within your applications is more complex than perhaps what you've been doing in the past. Now, this doesn't mean that we shouldn't do it, Sometimes complexity is a good thing, and certainly I feel as though the industry has proven at this point that a microservices architecture can be a very valid way to move forward as part of a digital or cloud transformation. And so the final consideration from a strategic perspective is how to introduce pilot programs. Now, we're not going to adopt microservices architecture across our entire organizations all on day one. We're going to want to focus in and look for an ideal candidate to be able to adopt and transition to this microservices architecture. And this is where a pilot program is really going to help you as a leader within your organization and the teams themselves as they work to adopt it. So finding an application and figuring out which one might be the easiest to convert into a microservices architecture is going to be crucial. And the pilot program can help you work through all of the things that we've talked about, how to form your teams into smaller, more functional teams, how to be able to adopt APIs as the way for intercommunication between the different microservices, how to introduce and implement a CICD pipeline, as well as figuring out which technical stacks you want to adopt as part of this digital or cloud transformation that you're driving this microservices architecture through. And so we want to make sure that we pick an application that's going to enable us to be successful and run a pilot program to be able to figure out what works and doesn't work for you individually as an organization. Understanding that not all organizations are the same. And so some of the principles that we've talked about will need to be tailored specifically to your orgs and your teams. Now, what might work for one company might not work for another but you can figure out through a pilot program what is working for you. And it's going to be important that at the end of a pilot program, again, a time bound type of project, that when you finish that pilot program, you come back as a group and you discuss openly what worked and what didn't work. So that as you strive to adopt microservices across your broader organization and across all of your engineering teams, you're gonna know how to tailor it to your organization specifically and the people that you have working for you. As I wrap up this video, I wanna make sure that we understand why we would adopt microservices or a microservice architecture within our organizations. Again, we want to be driving agility and the speed at which we are able to innovate. This is going to be crucial to our success as leaders, whether we are a CTO, CIO, or other leader within our organization. And microservices can be a drastic leap forward within our organizations to be able to drive that digital transformation. And so as we consider the reasons behind why we might implement microservices and the strategic considerations we should be thinking about, 
Bringing these things together are going to help you as a CTO or CIO to be able to quickly leverage and execute a digital transformation within your organizations. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please make sure that you subscribe to the Virtual Elephant YouTube channel, you hit that like button, and you leave me a comment below. In addition, you can find me on Twitter or X at Chris Mutchler. As always, please reach out and let me know what you think of this content and how I might be able to help you and your organizations drive a digital transformation. Until next time.